Clap your hands and pray. In Jesus' name. You are great. You are awesome. You deserve the glory. You deserve the honor. 
You deserve the praise. Just lift those hands and bless the Lord. Just lift those hands and bless the Lord. The Lord is great. The Lord is, is mighty. Jesus be exalted. Jesus be glorified. You are great and you are mighty. Somebody just lift your hands and say, Lord, I bless your holy name. Lord, I bless your holy name. Lord, I bless. Lord, I bless your holy name. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I bless you. You deserve the glory. You deserve the honor. You deserve the praise. You are good and you are great. You are good and you are great. You are mighty. Someone said, the Lord is great. The Lord my God 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 is great. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Son of God. Son of God. You deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. Mighty are you our God. Mighty are you our God. We bless your name. You are mighty. You are great. You are awesome. We worship you, Jesus. Just talk to him and bless his holy name. Just talk to him and bless his holy name. I don't hear you. I don't hear you. Jesus, we bless you. Jesus, we bless you. Jesus, we bless you. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. My righteousness. Jesus Christ. My righteousness. Jesus Christ. My righteousness. Jesus Christ. Somebody declare. Jesus Christ. My righteousness. 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 Jesus Christ. Declare it right now. Declare it right now. Jesus Christ. My righteousness. Jesus Christ. My righteousness. Jesus Christ, my righteousness. Jesus Christ, my righteousness. Jesus, somebody declare it right now in the name of Jesus. Declare it in the name of Jesus. Declare it in the name of Jesus. Jesus, my righteousness. 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 Declare it right now. Jesus, my righteousness. Jesus, my righteousness. Jesus, my righteousness. Jesus, my righteousness. Jesus. Yes. Son of God. 
We welcome your praises. For you are good and you are great. You are mighty. There is no God but you. There is no one but you. We submit ourselves to you. Our Lord and our God. We submit ourselves to you. Our Lord and our God. We submit ourselves to you, Lord. It's a prayer this morning that we submit ourselves to the Lord. We surrender to God. We surrender all to Him. We surrender all to Him. We surrender all to the Lord God. Take over, Father God. Take over, Father God. Almighty God. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The beginning and the end. The Alpha and the Omega. Take over today. Reign in my life. I surrender to you. I receive your life. I receive your life. I receive life. In Christ Jesus. I receive life in Christ. I receive life. I do not have a life of my own but to this morning I receive the life of Christ I receive life 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 I receive the life of Christ. I receive. I accept the life of Christ. 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 Just lift your hand and say, I receive life. 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 I don't hear say I accept the life of Christ. I accept the life of Christ in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise this morning. I know you can clap better than that. Amen. Amen. We're going to have our seats this morning. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining in on the altar. The morning altar. Which we shall be running the next 10 days starting the day with the altar starting the day with the altar Amen and we shall do all the practices of the prayer altar every morning and raise the altar of the Lord in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Welcome those that have come from the nations. We shall have a time of welcome later. Let's raise the altar of the Lord. Let's believe the Lord for his touch. Amen. Amen. One aspect of the altar is the reading of the word. Reading the word of God. Reading the Bible. Amen. Amen. Unlike other 
gatherings we always have. I believe this camp will be more going into the world. I believe you have your Bible with you. Amen. I believe you have the real Bible. Bible not, the, not this one. I'm encouraging you to have a real Bible. During the camp. I invite you to have your Bible with you. And we're going to read the book of First Peter. Not, we're not going to read a verse. We're going to read a book. Amen. Amen. We're going to read a book. The, the first session, we're going to read the book of Peter. I pray that in the next 10 days we can read 10 books. That every morning we read a book. Amen. 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 Is it boring? Every morning we shall read a book. Not a verse. Not a chapter. But a book. Someone's a book. Amen. Before we had the chapters. Before we had the chapters, before, before the, we didn't have these chapters, we didn't have verses, we had books. Amen. If someone writes to you a letter, you cannot understand it by picking a line from the letter. If I wrote to you a letter and you pick one sentence, you may not understand what I was, what I, was, I intend to communicate. Or if you picked a paragraph from the letter, you need to read the whole letter. Amen. You read the whole letter so that you can know what I, I was I tried to communicate. Amen. Amen. So I've decided to be reading the Bible by book, not by verse. By book, not by chapter. Amen. Amen. For example, if you look at Psalms, in the Psalms, there are several books. So even when I'm reading the Psalms, I don't read just a verse or a chapter, but I read a book in the Psalms. I pray that uh, after this camp, you will commit yourself to read the whole Bible. Amen. Uh, a few years ago, something amazing happened to me. A man of God called uh, a Bible reading conference. Her I never heard about that. The man had come from the United States and came here in Uganda and said he's going to conduct a Bible, not a Bible study, a Bible reading conference. I went into that conference. There were no preaching, no casting out demons. You know when you are in Africa, and you have a conference without casting out demons. I'm, I'm telling you, people will not come the next day. <laughs> you need to at least scratch some demons. But this man said, You're not going to even, not going to even praying hours. 
So we could pray, they could pray morning, uh, the, the opening prayer. And then begin reading the Bible. It looked funny to me. You travel all the way to come to uh, Uganda and just read the Bible. And I could hear even as the pastors were like, this man. I was not a pastor, the pastors. They're saying this man. Just reading the Bible. You know, these people have time to waste. But they could not go away. Because the man had paid for the allowances. And so they had to stay around. He had paid for their lunch. So they had to stay around and because of the food. So the first day the man is leading and says, so get your Bible and we read. We keep reading, we keep reading, we keep reading. Till the end of the day. The second day we keep reading, we keep reading. And we ended the day. The third day we keep reading, keep reading. We ended the day. The fourth day we kept reading and reading. At the end of the fourth day, after reading, he said, now it's time for testimonies. I said, where are they? Which testimonies? If God has healed you, if God has delivered you, if God has touched you, come and stand here. I said, no way. You have not cast out demons. And you expect people to, be, to give testimonies. Listen. I had testimonies I've never had. Even today I've never seen a meeting that had such testimonies. I saw people stand from their seats lift their crunches push their wheelchairs people were testifying things and then he said later if you came here with anything of witchcraft, bring it here. People brought things. Even live tortoises. Live brought them on the altar. I saw things I said I was a witch but I've never seen these witches. Because people brought things. Even snakes in their bags. And then there was a sense of holiness. The fear of God. The awesomeness. And that meeting changed my life. One thing I learned in that meeting the word of God does not need a man to defend it. The word it don't itself contained. You don't need even to defend it. We, sometimes we spend time defending the word. Debating the word. The word of God is enough. I say the word of God is enough. The Bible, the word of God is enough. It does not need an explanation. So we shall, we're going to read the word which is enough and I believe the Lord is watching to perform his word. He's watching to perform his word in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So in this camp, we shall read more of the word and we shall spend more time waiting upon the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's going to be boring, I'm telling you. Because many of you, you do not know the secret and the power of waiting upon the Lord. To come in a meeting and tarry. 
and wait upon the Lord and listen and minister to the Lord and let the Lord minister to you this is how we're going to go through this camp I expect by the end of it men of you will be so much bored to return home because I'm praying to God that it may be just few of us so that we can now concentrate on hosting the glory of God I'll try to avoid all the excitement that will, so that you can go home before we end so that I can have a few of you so that you know sometimes we, we, we are in the excitement the preaching the man of God and we miss God we are so taken by, by the man of God and we miss God are you hearing me? We so much taken the preachings and we miss God. We shall wait upon the Lord. We shall not just imagine, assume things. We shall ask. We shall inquire. When you come for your, to minister to you, I will inquire. Lord, what is this? What are you saying? What are you saying about this man? What are you saying about this woman? What is the root? And we are waiting to hear from you. We are waiting to hear from the Lord. Amen. Amen. So that's why we call it a camp. It's a consecration camp. Someone called it a concentration camp. Oh. <laughs> I said the concentration camps are not good things. <laughs> they are for IDPs and what but, but Pastor James, for me I call it concentration because we are going to concentrate. <laughs> And I said, oh, I think that's good. It's a concentration. So we are going to let the word of God soak in us. Let me say this before we read. I have been cancer free for over 20 years. 20 years ago, Actually, 21 years ago, I was diagnosed with leukemia. It was so demonic by the time I went to hospital, it was stage 4. And I lost my sight. I was blind for almost nine months. I was paralyzed for almost nine months. Because my back had been damaged. And the doctors declared I'll never walk again. When I went through different uh, sessions of chemotherapy, I lost my sight. My eyeballs became black. When you open my eyes, you could just see a black ball. And they said, I'll never see again. I could not even lift my, my finger. Every part of my body was bleeding. Bleeding. And then after bleeding, then became then bed sores. And then I carried wounds all over my body. I could not breathe by myself. Because my lungs had failed. But when I was in the hospital, the Lord spoke to 
a sister. The members of this church know that sister. sister Rose. She, to come to hospital and read 25 chapters of the Bible to me. Not preach, but just read. And I could be in pain. No painkiller could stop the pain. All kind of painkillers. And the pain could remain, it was, remain there. But the only time I was not in pain. When she begins to read the Bible. She could come and stand outside the room. Because she could not be allowed into the room. Fear of infections but also she, they didn't want her to see what, uh, how I was. But also any, any movement to the room. If you open the door and enter the, you know, or close the door, the vibration of the room could send my body into shock. So they could not allow people into my room. But the only time I, could, I didn't feel the pain it's when she was reading the Bible. So she could come, she could leave work come to hospital read the bible 25 chapters and go and that time I'm not in pain so I could be in pain till the next day and after at the end of the one year she was doing that every day and at the end of it the Lord told her to stop and that day I had been declared clinically dead so they told my, mother to, my, my people to carry me home and when I was home the word became flesh Jesus appeared to me no one prayed for me Jesus appeared to me my eyes opened my legs were restored I can see now without glasses I can walk I can stand eight hours in prayer. I fast most of my life, my time. It's now 21 years. I'm free. From leukemia. But why am I giving you that testimony? Not teaching the word. Not quoting a verse. But for one year. The word was pumped into my system. Not preaching. Not casting out demons. I had many demons. But the word. The word. Cast them out. Not the sound of a man. Not the fire from the mouth of a preacher. But the word. Amen. Someone say the word. Say the word. What does he send? He sends his word. To heal them. The beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. You're going to fall in love with your Bible. In this camp, you're going to fall in love with your Bible. Amen. Amen. So let's open our Bibles. The book of First Peter. We are going to read the book of First Peter. I know maybe it will be here one day on the screens. <coughs> Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who are elect exiles of the dispensation of in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Petero, umtume wa Yesu Christu, eri abalonde, abasasana, abatambuze, abomu ponto, galatia, 
Cappadocia, Asia, Nebuchadnezzar. According to the foreknowledge of God in the Father, in the sanctification of the Spirit, for obedience to Jesus Christ, and for sprinkling with his blood, may grace and peace be multiplied to you. Ngabwe ya soko kutege la katonda chitafe, mkutukuza kuomoyo, oruo kugonda, no kumansiru wako umsaigwa Yesu Christo, echisa ne mirembe, bie yongere yongere nga jemuri. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Yeba ziwe katonda era chitawe wa mkama wafe, Yesu Christo, ea tuzala, omurundi ogoku bili, ngoku sasira kukunji wekuli, tuberenga ne subi edamu, oruo kuzukira kwa Yesu Christo mubafu. Have you finished verse 5? Tu yingirenga mubusika obuta guawo, obuta linako, obuta otoka, obwa Obwaba obwante kero atwekera mu muguru amanyi ga katonda bega kuma olwo kukiriza okufuna obulokozi obwetesetese okubikulirwa mu biro ebyenkomerero In this you rejoice though now for a little while if necessary you've been grieved by various trials so that the tested genuineness of your faith more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire may be bound to result in praise and glory and honor at this revelation of Jesus Christ. Owo, we mujia gulizamu, ne wankuba denga, mwana mwa mwana kuwaziba, mukukeme mwa oktali kumu, akasera katono kakano, ubanga chiba gwanida, ukugeze sewa, kuo kukwiza kwa mwuksingwa omwendo ezabu egwao, ne wankuba de. Ngegeze sewa mulibu, kulio uke kulabike, okule tetendo, nechitiwa, no kugulumiziwa, Yesu Kristo, bwali bikulibwa. Amen. Amen. So, we will just, we will keep reading. Ojage na masongo somu. The Luganda people you will follow within, within your Bible. You are not going to do the interpretation. Katite tugenda kuita mkufu nula. So, I uh, will continue. We were on verse so, though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is, that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied about the grace that was to be yours searched and inquired carefully, inquiring what person or time the spirit of Christ in them was indicating when he predicted the suffering of Christ and the subsequent glories. Let me say this briefly. Let me say this briefly. I want you to not look in the Bible to look through the verses, I want you to speak them. I want you to read, you read audibly. Yes, you can read with your eyes, but release it in the atmosphere. With your, in your own words. So as I read, I was be reading. Don't listen, but read. Okay, so we will, we will continue to verse 12. It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves but you in the things that have now been announced to you through those who preach the good news to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. Verse 13. Therefore, preparing your mind for action and being sober-minded, Set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient, 
as obedient children, do not be confirmed to the passions of your former ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it's written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on him as father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourself with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last time for the sake of you, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. <clears throat> Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere for a sincere brother love, love one another honestly from a pure heart, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers, and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord remains forever, as this word is the good news that was preached to you. So put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up into salvation if indeed you have tested that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves are living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, Behold, I'm laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. For the honor is for you who believe. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellences of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you've received mercy. Beloved, I urge you as chajoners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. Be subject to the Lord's sake, be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be to the emperors as supreme or to governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. For this is the will of God that by doing good, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. Servants, be subject to your masters with all respect, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the unjust. For this is a gracious thing when, mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if, when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is, gracious, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. 
When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges unjustly. He himself bore a sin in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Likewise, wives, be subject to your own husbands, so that even if some do not obey the word, they may be won without a word by the conduct of their wives when they see your respectful and pure conduct. Do not let adornment be external, the braiding of your hair and the putting on of gold jewelry and the clothing you, and the clothing you wear. But let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which in God's sight is very precious. For this is how the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves by submitting to their own husbands as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. But you are her children if you do good and do not fear anything that is frightening. Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Finally, all of you have unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, a humble mind. Do not repay evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, bless for to this you were called, that you may obtain a blessing. For whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Now, you who is there now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good but even if you should suffer for righteousness sake you will be blessed have no fear of them nor be troubled but in your hearts honor christ the lord as holy always prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it's better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put being put to death in the flesh but made alive in the spirit in which he went and proclaimed to the priests the spirits in prison because they formerly did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared in which a few that is eight persons were brought safely through water baptism which correspond to this now saves you now, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven as it is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him. Since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same way of thinking, for whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, so as to live for the rest of the time in the flesh, no longer for human passion, but for the will of God. For the time that is past suffices for doing what the Gentiles want to do, living in sensuality, passions, drunkenness, orgies, drink parties, and lawless idolatry. With respect to this, they are surprised when you do not join them in the same flood of debauchery and they, are malign, and they malign you, but they will give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is why the gospel was preached even to those who are dead, that though judged in the flesh the way people are, they might live in the spirit the way God does. In the end of all things is at hand. 
Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly since love covers a multitude of sins. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as a good steward of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trials when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you, uh, you share Christ's sufferings that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, all as a thief, all an evildoer, all as a meddler. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For it's written, for judgment to begin at the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous is is scarcely saved. What will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. So I exhort you, the elders among you, as a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as a partaker in the glory that is going to be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly as God would have you, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not domineering over those in your charge, but being example to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. Likewise, you, are, likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility towards one another, for God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary is the devil, prows around like a rolling lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kind of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. By Sylvanus. A faithful brother as I regard him. I have written briefly to you as halting and declaring that this is the true grace of God. Stand firm in it. She who is at Babylon, who is likewise chosen, sends you greetings, and so does Mark, my son. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace to all of you who are in Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. For the first time, you have read a book. For the first time, you have read a book in the Bible. And the message which I picked from this book to this, this morning and for this uh, camp is a call to be holy. A call to be holy. In our conduct, in our doctrines, in everything that we are God is calling. The, the, uh, Peter is writing to them and saying, in all be holy. Holy 
in your thoughts. And the goal is to please Christ. The call that Christ may be glorified. I love when he says that, uh, Behold, I'm laying as in Zion a stone. A cornerstone chosen and precious. And whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. I love that. Whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. And I love when he says the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Praise God. So he says you shall be holy for I am holy. Because he who called you is holy. Beloved God has sent a standard for us the standard he has set is that be holy and where you feel you are below the standard keep returning to the Lord and say Lord help me help me to walk right help me to walk in the fear of God help me to walk in the in the knowledge of your truth. There is a, a, a scripture in the book of Hebrews that scares me. It doesn't scare me that I fear it, but I, well, every time I read it, I say, God, help me. If you look at Hebrews chapter 6, Hebrews chapter 6. He says, Therefore, let us leave that lamentally doctrine of Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God and of instruction about washings, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and the eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. For it is impossible. In the case of those who have once been enlightened, who have tested the heavenly gift and have shared in the Holy Spirit and have tested the goodness of the word of God and the power of the age to come and then have fallen away to restore them again to repentance since they are crucifying once again the Son of God to their own harm and holding him to, be, to contempt. Now, when you read down, Please take time to read chapter 7, chapter 6. And chapter 7. And chapter 8. And chapter 9. Because chapter 9 you come to the, understand the, the earthly holy place. And then the redemption through the blood of Christ. What I'm saying in this camp, the 10 days we are here, the demand is be holy. And I know I cannot be holy by myself. That's why I humble myself. That's why I'm waiting. That's why I'm sacrificing. That's why I want to be in my bed. I want to be in my house. But I'm saying, let me tarry in the presence of the Lord. Because in his presence, that's where I can live in a holy life. Hallelujah. In his presence. Amen. I pray that today and throughout this week, your focus never to be on me. Not even your faith in me. Not even your hope that I can do something miraculous for you. Let your focus be on the Lord Jesus Christ. And let your eyes be upon him, the author and perfect of your faith. 
Aumutandisi era atukirizo kukiriza ku. Amen. Amina. I'm a seeker like you are a seeker. Ndimu no nyinga na webo no nyinga. I'm seeking holiness. No nyo butukufu. I'm seeking that that mom that day. No nyo luna kuru. That I, may, I will not be disqualified. Neme kube ranga sisa nira. It's my cry. It's my desire. It's what I pursue every day. That after all is said and done, I will stand before the Lord. And he will say, Welcome, good and faithful servant. You know, uh, there is this uh, scripture if you open the book of Matthew chapter 7 Matthew chapter 7 and all many of us have been using the the digital bible and you are struggling to open this paper Bible. Now let me read this portion. Matthew chapter 7. The last, the, the, the last, uh, the last seven verses. I'll read, I'll read the, the first, the last. It says verse 21. Matthew 7, 21. We'll read from there. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I would declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Amen. I never knew you. Depart from me. Another version says, you workers of iniquity. They were workers of iniquity. But they were casting out demons. They were prophesying in the name of the Lord. They were doing miracles, mighty works in the name. Mighty works in the name of the Lord. They are casting out demons in the name of the Lord. They were prophesying in his name. And one thing, he says, I never knew you. I never knew you. What? Away from me, you workers of lawlessness. Who are, and then he begins to give us the details what he means. In the next uh, verse. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against the house and it fell and great was the fall of it. The fall was great. The fall was great. Because they did not listen the word. 
they followed mighty works. Hello? Hello? They did not follow the word but followed men because of mighty works. So when the men fell they also fell. Ah, when the men fell when the mighty works ceased. The man fell. Amen. Amen. Let me speak to you fellow ministers of God. It's dangerous to build your ministry on only manifestations and demonstrations. Hear me? It's dangerous to build your ministry on works, on manifestations, on demonstrations. Because you can easily be deceived yourself. Are you getting what the enemy can do is to flatter you every day by sending his agents around you to pretend that they are under the influence of the power in you. They manifest, they shout, they do all kind of things. And to you as a man, if you're not discerning, that most of the manifestations in our meetings are false. People are not delivered. Most of them are diversions. Most of the so-called manifestations are diversions. Are diverting. The, 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 the enemy wants people to have attention to on him. And you the man of God or the woman of God the enemy begin to flatter you and it tells you look at the power look at the people falling look at the miracles and most of these miracles are not miracles are false miracles are false miracles the devil who brought an affliction removes one affliction and gives you lust. He takes away the sickness and gives you pride. Because he knows while you were in that condition you were seeking God to do his will. But now the enemy sorts you out quickly that you leave the will of God and you, end, you, you find yourself in hell. And I want to say this this morning. You maybe you'll be so shocked to see great men, great preachers who were, who were used in ma with mighty works and casting out demons and you see them in hell and they find themselves in hell with the same demons they were casting out. You know I cast out demons every day. I torment demons. But I just say myself, what if I'm not in the will of God? And one day I find myself in the same place, in the same hell, with all the demons I cast out. <laughs> and they say, oh, you have fallen like us. You have fallen like us. 
Oh, you mighty one. You who are doing mighty things. You have fallen like us. See how you have fallen. You are like a morning star. Every one of you. Everyone worshipped you. Everyone was, 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 a, was a, you a great man. You, you tormented us. And you are like us. Go and, read, go and read Isaiah 14. He said, you, uh, you have fallen. You are like us. And I fear that. And I'm saying, they will say, oh, how you have fallen. Oh, morning star. You who brought others down. You have become weak like us. The worms are waiting for you. Now you are laying in state. And, you know, and what will happen to you if your ministry, your life, you are pursuing mighty works, casting out demons to impress men but offend the Holy Spirit. You people can, and I'm telling you, men of God and women of God, these people don't believe them, don't let them carry you. You are not the first man they have praised, you are not the first man they have followed. Hear me, the people. Do not let them deceive you. You are not the first one. They have been doing that for all their Christian lives. They have been following men and then after that they hear there's another there's a new one. There's now the viral one. There's the one who is viral. And they follow. But even those who are not willing to change, those who have sold their souls to the devil, those who are sons of perdition, will also follow you. Will also follow you. To just stop you from doing the will of God. You know, I, I, the times I read the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. When the thing was like, you know, now when he was becoming, when he was viral, uh -huh. and everyone is surrounding him. People are coming, he's becoming famous. He told the disciples, let us leave now. Let's go to another city. Let's leave this place. Ah, if I was the one, I need to build there. Because now, it's, it's the people following me. One day they wanted to make him a king. And he ran away. Because he knew their hearts. He knew the deception in the hearts of men. And he knew they can easily take you out of the will of God. Am I talking to somebody? Do not build your Christian life. Do not build your ministry on what people are saying about you. Make sure you are pleasing the Lord. Not on the works. But your relationship with God. It's not about the great things you do. But finishing the work of the Lord. That the Lord gave you. That remaining in the will of God. Pursuing the will of God. Hello. Hello. Pursuing the will of God. And I'm telling you in his way. He knows how to keep you safe. So we are asking God for his will. I'm asking God for his will. If it is his will to deliver you now, let it be. If it is his will to be healed tomorrow, that's what I'm asking. We are asking for the will of God. In the days we are in, in the days we are in, it's only those that have built their lives on truth that will stand. 
building your life on truth. Not on what people are saying. Not on, 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 your sh on what you show them. But what God is saying about them. As a believer in this place, in this camp, determine to do the will of God and him alone. And you are here for these 10 days seeking the will of God for your life, for your family, for your nation, and for your generation. I wish I'm talking to somebody. You are here not to see James, James, but to seek the will of God. If it's the will of God for me Katonda, to meet you, he will arrange it in his timing. Are you getting me? If it's the will of God for me to pray with you one on one, it, it will happen in his way. Now focus on Christ and tell the Lord, I'm here to do your will. I'm here for your will. Not my will, but your will. You've brought me here. Let your will be done. Because that's what makes a difference. That's what will... Listen, friends. The devil, the evil one, can perform miracles. You know, one of the end times deception will be the miracles. One of the end times deception the man, the man of lawlessness the antichrist the antichrist will be a man of powers a man of miracles a man of demonstration that will amaze many are you getting me? but even when they are fake and false and deceiving miracles the Lord will also do the real miracles which will bring glory to his name. I, I, I don't want, and I always say this, anything done out or outside the will of God, even if it has the label of the name of the Lord, it is witchcraft. Are you getting me? Do not think that miracles don't happen in, by, in the witches' places. Do not think there are no signs. Do not think there are no miracles in the kingdom of darkness. I was there. And I'm telling you, if you see the powers, the things that they were doing, what I was doing, and you, you and believe that that's God, you can easily be deceived. You can easily be deceived. Um, are you getting what I'm about? And that's where many of us are cannot discern that which is of God and that which is of evil because we have refused the truth. Because we do not love the truth. You know, I've discovered, friends, that many people, prayer is shopping. Like a shopping list. Tell God what you, what you want and, and, let, and force him to do it. Now that's a lie. Prayer is not shopping. Prayer is not telling God what you want. Prayer is a means of entering into what God is doing. Is coming into the things of God. Coming into the fullness of the things of God. Coming into the will of God.
kwe kuyingira mu katonda byayagala okuyingira mu bujuvu bwe bintu bya katonda okuyingira mu kwagala kwa katonda and you know era omanyinti you, you cannot pray effectively tosobola kusaba mu ngeri egasa in the flesh mu mubiri are you getting me ontegera the flesh o mubiri cannot pray so the desires of the flesh that what you want in your flesh hinders you to pray but if you pursue to pray the will of God and you want to know the will of God and you desire to walk according to the purposes of God you may not be famous you may not be known by men but at the end of the day there is a day when the Lord will say welcome because you've been faithful you've pursued my will you are a pursuer of the will of God amen we're going to be starting today the 1000 days of consecration and you say pastor James why a thousand days? It's what we are offering to the Lord. We are saying, God, we want to offer ourselves to be separated to you that you transform us these 1,000 days that we may walk into your purposes. Amen. We want to tell the Lord. We want to offer ourselves. To wait upon you. To seek your face. It's not the first time. We're not the first people to do this. I, I, I always use this story. Jesus comes to the, to the, to the, to the river to be baptized. Jesus comes to the river to be baptized. And the spirit of the Lord descends on him. In a voice. In a, with a, and the dove. You know, everyone knows this is the Christ. Because of what has happened. If I was him, the next day I would have, be having a crusade. John has endorsed me. You know that those days, John was viral. Everyone was going to John. The whole nation. And then John says, this is the one. Yes, This is the reason I've been baptizing. Wow, this wow. is the man now. And even heaven opens. And the dove comes down. The next day if I was that, if I was the one, I would call a conference. Because I've been endorsed. Do you know what happened? No one knew about Jesus the next 40 days and 40 nights. Can you imagine? Hey, if I was the one, I would call the middle crusade of Nazareth. The Jordan revival. The Jerusalem move, move of God. Because I've been endorsed. But look at the principle. After that, he is led into the desert alone to be tested. Yes, God has endorsed him. But has, have you been tested and proved? Okay, guess, okay, 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 have you been approved? Hmm? The anointing has to be proved. So he goes into 40 days of, of, of fasting without food to be tested. Not to be tried, but to be tested. To be tempted. 40 days. You know, 
Moses Musa leads the children of Israel. He leads them. And is leading them in the desert. Then he leaves them there. He goes to the mountain. 40 days, 40 nights. He, you know, he has left a church. 600,000. All 2 million people. All of them depend on him. But he leaves them to go before the Lord. He leaves them. Are you getting me? I thank God for the consecration journey. Because if I had not understood consecration, if, I, if it was like in the past, now I would be all now on the next plane. Traveling nations because of the hundreds of invitations that have come to me. I get invitations every day. Different platforms, networks, churches. Come, James. We want you. We had your testimony. Come. We are, we are going, we're having a meeting. And I ask myself, is it the will of God? Is it the will of God? Is it what God has told you to do? That you invite me in your church. And when the Lord said, Don't move. Stay here. That's the will of God. First, finish your consecration. Finish your journey. Don't be, don't just go. Stay in my will. Out there things may look so good. But they will drain you. They will drain you. Are you getting me? In 20, some years ago, 2015, 2015. I gave my testimony in a meeting. I was 15, 16. 15. 15. I gave my testimony in a meeting. What is happening now happened. People were blessed. And I began getting invitations. You know what happened? Packed my bags. I packed my bags. From one nation to another nation. From one altar to another altar. Oh, I was everywhere. 2018, after only three years, the Lord came to me and said, stop what you're doing. Return in my presence. I said, yes, Father. But I have a crusade. Next week. Let me finish that crusade. I will come. He says, stop what you're doing. Return in my presence. But Lord, I have this, this seminar in Singapore. Let me finish Singapore and I will come. He comes again. Stop what you're doing. Oh, God, you know these people? I've, I've paid for everything. They've been waiting for one year. They've paid for the whole. The people have been crying to me to come. Let me first finish China and I come. Stop what you're doing and come back in my presence. Now, now the 2018 ends. I've not yet come. 2019 begins. He says, James, James, stop what you're doing. Return in my presence. And I say, God, let me finish March. <laughs> If I finish March, this, this training I'm going to do, I will return. He waits. March ends. He says, James, James, stop it. Come in my presence. I say, Lord, only May, only May, I will come. You know what happened? I fell sick. My family was attacked. The ministry scattered. 
I was dying. My children were attacked. I fell sick. I became suicidal. I became suicidal because I was under depression. So much depression that I wanted to die. My wife was watching me because I was suicidal. I have been all over the world. But now I want to die. I don't have the presence of God. You know, and the invitation is still coming. But now I'm dying. My wife sometimes will be from the plane. I'm sick. She's holding me to go in the meeting and preach. And all that had started in 2015. The Lord said, Lord, the Lord wiped it away from 2019. It all ended. 2020, consecration began. It was a global consecration. COVID-19. COVID global, cons global, no travels, no planes, no invitations, no church. Do you hear what I'm talking about? Many of you don't, didn't know the reason why God sent COVID. COVID. <laughs> no conferences, conference. no seminars, seminar. no travels, no church, consecration. But when 20, 20 began, <laughs> this God, you know, 2019, I go through all that. The Lord heals me. Restores me. January 2020, <laughs> I'm back on the plane. After 2019, the sickness and what? And all the scattering. January 2020, I am back. I'm back. I begin traveling again. I was in Singapore. February. COVID had begun. And I'm in my hotel. And I hear this. What's going to happen? You will know the price of rebellion. I said, what? I'm in a room with people. They are putting on masks. You know, COVID began that part of the world. That Singapore, those, 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 those nations. This way, we had not known it. And people are putting on masks. For the first time, I'm seeing people with masks in a meeting. And I tell my, my host, I'm going home. I come to the airport. Airport. Changi Airport. Airport. Of Singapore. Yeah, Singapore. The airport is deserted. It's like a haunted. It's like, you know, Ngeji moving Ngeji alone. The, there are no people. Teribantu. It's like, you know, deserted. Our flight from Singapore to, to Dubai was the last flight from Singapore before they closed. In that Boeing, that big plane, too big for 300-seater, we were only seven passengers. You know, it was so scary. It was like a, a flight to hell. I'm telling you, do you know a deserted flight? A flight to hell. I was like, What's going on? We come to Dubai. Dubai. Deserted. Not many people. We fly to Uganda. Uganda. Life is normal. <laughs> you know, I was so scared that I reached the airport and I was almost shouting at the people there. I am from Singapore. I'm from Malaysia where there is COVID. 
Do you see me? So I tell the, the, the young lady. Because I had heard that if you've come, you come from those nations, you have to be isolated. So I tell the girl, you know what? I'm coming from Singapore. She said, yes, I know. I say, yes, from Singapore. She says, yes, yes. I say, do you know where I'm coming from? He says, I know, but you can go. I say, I come home. I tell my wife, the world is dying. The world is just it's okay. I'm driving and seeing people. They are sitting, you know, there are people who, who drink and put these straws in a pot. Malua. And there are ten of them and using one pot. And I want to shout at them COVID! COVID. Something! And people are like, it's okay. I'm so scared that I don't want to leave home. But the good thing, I just know whatever will happen, God has blessed me. I have money. I have my money, my dollars. I have a, my money on my account. Because I had heard about the lockdowns in those nations. So I knew the lockdown is coming to Uganda. But I'm safe. I have my money. March. First week, March. The present announces. Therefore, all movements. And I just know, I told, I told you. Now we're in the house. Hey, my home was haunted. <laughs> the Lord wants me to sit. After two days, I want to move away. Because if early in the morning, 9 a.m., I am so hungry. And my wife says, can't you go anywhere? Because <laughs> now everything is offending you. I am under depression. But I have my money. I now will be safe. Then the Lord who says, you know, James, you are going to have a worship explosion. Get all the money you have and have a worship meeting online. online. And I say, God, where will the people come from? Say, the church will be empty because people are not allowed to come. Get the screens, get the sound, get everything, and the money you have. Now pay for the equipment and have a, and have worship explosions. Go and pay TV station to have that worship. He's taking away my money. I'm not aware. He's taking away my money. We have worship explosion. We have it online. How many people are viewing? 10, 15. <laughs> With all my money, <laughs> 10 people, God, what am I wasting? And he says, do it seven weeks. Oh, God, my money. But at least I have some money. Then lastly, he says, I, need, I want watch explosion. But on the TV station we were hosting it, they chase us away. We don't want your worship. I said, God, thank you. Praise the Lord. It's not me. It's them. Those people are bad. They have chased us. So we'll stop. He says, you're not stopping. Now the money you have, all the money you have, start a TV station. Hey, COVID, in COVID. 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 So we begin the paperwork. And really the, the money we needed is all that we had saved as a family. We pay it. And I tell my wife, what next? We are in COVID. No church, no offerings, no, no invitations. And that's <laughs> now our money is gone in a TV station that we, no one even is viewing. 
No view. No one wa no one watching. WTV worship television. No one no one even knows it. People are dying. We don't have the money. Then he says to me consecration. Now you can sit. <laughs> Now you can sit and do what I wanted you to do. No, no money, no preaching. One Sunday morning, we were doing online meetings. We came here and this place was empty. Only the camera team and my microphone. I stood here and cried. You know, preaching, just assuming someone is watching somewhere. <laughs> And then I saw the people watching. They were four. Four. I said, where are the believers? I called some people in church. Hello. Hello. I'm not seeing you online. Daddy. No data. I called another one. Daddy. I'm busy. We, we are live now. So I could send messages. I'm, I'm going live in five minutes. Then I check the five of them. <laughs> five on Facebook, seven on YouTube. I say, God, this is so bad. He says to me, consecration. Consecration. <laughs> So we began in 2020 until now we are here. This is 2024. In 2023, he said, Now, the first phase of your personal consecration is over. Now, call the people for consecration after you've gone through it. Bring them to be set apart. Walk with them now where you've walked. Die with them. That was the word. Die with them. Meaning, walk with them to the place of the flesh dying that they may ascend into the realms of God. Because when the flesh dies, then the spirit ascends. I wish I'm talking to somebody. When the flesh dies and crucified, then the spirit ascends and you can now know the will of God. So that's the journey. And now he says, he said to me, it would now start one. I, did, I had not counted that from 2020 until 2023 when he said it's over, it had been a thousand days. And then he says, now another a thousand days from your personal, now you're going to go corporate. Now you have done it yourself. Now the body. Now, now the whole body of Christ. The, the remnants. They that have been waiting. Hello. Hello. The remnants. Oh my God. The remnants. I say the remnants. Hear the word, the remnants. The 7,000 that have been in the caves seeking God alone now do it as a group. Now do it as a body. You are here because God has been dealing with you the last three years. I wish you are here not by accident. God has been dealing with you as one and you thought you were strange. Now you found other strange people to confirm to you that you are not just strange, you are separated. Oh, makatado shatadia. I wish I'm talking to somebody. Are you getting what I'm talking about? 
you have been doing things and saying, but am I strange? Am I normal? I'm abnormal. I'm alien. Now you're finding other aliens to confirm that this journey, you are not alone. There are others God has been training, has been separating, has been setting apart for the end time move of God without blemish. I wish I'm talking to somebody. What's wrong with your microphone? Amen. Can you please help her? She has no microphone. Are you getting what I'm talking about? If I can walk with you, leave that. Why did you bring here? If I can walk with you the last three years of your life, if I can track you the last three years of your life, there was a shift. Things that you used to enjoy, you lost them. Things that were your, the, your, your worth, your property, turned away from you. As if the enemy was attacking you. It was not an attack. It was a testing. I wish I'm told someone. Amen. It, the enemy, God used him to test. If you look at the last 1,000 days of your life, up to day, up to day, I wish I'm told somebody, up to day, strange things you cannot explain have been happening to you, to your family, to your marriage, and you're wondering what's going on. Now that you finish that phase, let's start together as a body. Let's start this journey. Hallelujah. 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 I know some people sitting here. As I speak now, you don't have even a home. You don't have even a house. And you say, What has happened in the three years? I've been in the desert. <laughs> I've been in the desert. You, you don't have even a home. You don't have even a job. You don't have even an, an income. And you used to have it. You used to have it. You had the money. You had the means. You had the connections. And God has been like everything has gone. And you saying, Lord, what next? What next? My friends have turned away from me. My church does not understand me. My pastor does not understand me. It's as if I'm an alien to my friends. It's as if I'm a reject to my people. I might talk to somebody. Let me talk to a friend here. You are saying what, what, what all the things I worked for have gone. All that I thought was my security has gone. That which was my, my hope has gone. And I'm saying God this is my last step. Let me talk to somebody right now. Let's start again together. Let's start again together. Let's walk together again. Hallelujah. 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 Let's walk together again. Amen. So, 
Why am I saying this? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is, hallelujah, thank you Jesus. The call, the call to surrender again. Amen. Amen. Can you get another microphone please? Technicians, can you please help us here? Are you there? A call. A call. Another season of surrender. Another season of surrender. And the, the reason the Lord has brought you here, the reason you have, you, we, have, we have met, because we met before. You haven't heard what I said. Because it's scripted, eh? The reason we have met because we met before. When you heard me, there's a witness in you saying, I, That is him. Yo, yo. That is him. Yo, yo. You, didn't, you couldn't put things to say, that's I, him. I don't know what it is, but that's him. I don't know him, but that's him. I know we have met. I know he says what I know. I know he confirms what I understand. I know he declares what I know. Though the others don't understand. But that's him. We have met. We have known each other. Am I talking to somebody right now? What? There's something that came to the moment you saw, you heard, you said, mm. 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 Some of you told your people, I'm going. And they said, Are you crazy? Are you crazy? They said, I'm going. And they said, But and they said, do you mean it? Do you know where? Do you know where I'm going? Say, I don't know, but I'm going. I don't know, but I have to go because we have already met in the consecration realm. We know each other. I can identify some of you when I see you. I just say we have met already. I know I have met you. I know we have known each other. You know, have you seen that some of you? When we meet physically, I don't need introduction. The way I trust you easily. And you say, but wait a minute. You even do not know my name. But you are telling me to drive you. How come you can trust me now? We are meeting because we have met. <laughs> I wish I'm told somebody. We are meeting there because we've, we already met. And there's a witness in you and me saying we have been called together. We have been chosen together. Am I talking to somebody? I'm not somebody. And they that have not come into that realm may not understand why you pay such a price. Why you spend all that money. You are not seeking a miracle. You are seeking alignment. You are not seeking God to give you something. You are seeking to become something from glory to glory. Amen. Can you remove that thing, please? We don't need it. We don't need it. So, your consecration, where you have been, you have been moving alone. Let me talk to you some people. In the last three years, there are people here. You were cast out of your church. 
<laughs> Let me talk to you right now. I'm not condoning rebellion, but I'm saying you did nothing wrong, but you could not stay in that space. Are you getting me? It's not that they were wrong and you were not wrong. No. There was something God was doing. I'm, am I talking to somebody? Yes. <laughs> you know I love when David was anointed king those with the dates <laughs> those with problems <laughs> those who were in distress are the ones that came around him <laughs> Not genos. Because the genos could not submit to a shepherd. The genos, the fighters, could not submit to a shepherd boy to be their king. His brothers Baganda could not follow him. Even when he had killed Goliath. To them, he was the little boy at the home Eka. who takes care of a little flock. <laughs> he had killed Goliath. But that was not enough. That was not enough for his brother and the fighters to submit to him. They only submitted when he had raised his own army. Do you hear what I'm talking about? They only submitted he had raised his own army. He has won his own battles and now they could, he could take a throne. You cannot take a throne with someone's army. Are you here what I'm talking about? You cannot take a throne with someone's army. <laughs> you cannot take a ministry with someone's ministers. You raise your army. And you raise those with dates. <laughs> those with problems. Those who are called witches. Called wizards. Called false prophets. Though they love God. Called strange. Though they serve a living God. When, you know, some of you come to me and say, Intercessor James. I'm crying. They've called me a witch. But I love the Lord. I love. I say, sister. I have been there. I have been there. A whole denomination wrote letters about me. Spread them over the nation. But I'm here. I am here. Are you getting me? On Tegera. Yes. Wechiri. Some of you. Awamukumwe. <laughs> they told you you love your demons. Bagamant diamonds o zagala. Because every service you are they are coming out. Then they said I think you love your demons. Waga na echi aika diamond o zagala yezo. Until you find David Daudi in the camp. In the, in, in the cave. And gather around David. And raise you. And raise you. And raise you. You know, I had this, this idea. When you, people come for deliverance and for help, and I said, this was my idea. Let their pastors recommend them. I was wrong. I have to admit I was wrong. My intention is that all we are body, I was wrong. 
That's what I, I thought. Oh, God, tell your pastor to call me to write a letter to me. I didn't know what I'm talking about. I didn't know what I'm talking about. That is impossible. I thought it's, that's how it should be done. I realize many want their people in bondage. That's how they control them. That's how they manipulate them. And I went before the Lord. He rebuked me. He really rebuked me. He said, how dare you? How do you? You who recommended you. Who recommended your deliverance? Who wrote a letter? Why are you becoming proud? Why are you becoming arrogant? You think you've arrived? I have raised you for my people. I'm teaching for my people. Not to take them in the bondage. But if they are desperate. Because they love me. If they have come to you. Because they are looking for a solution. They know where they know where they are coming from. They know what has happened to them. You don't need to send them there. Walk with my people. And I, I repent. Forgive me. Now it's heaven that we recommend you. Because the Lord said to me that all, most of those people I have sent them. I have sent them. I have convicted them. I have told them go. Why do you tell them to go back in what they are coming from? So I decided to stop that. Then I realized we know each other. I realized God has been, you have been on a journey, the journey I have been on, we are now coming together to walk a journey as the army of the Lord. Consecration. And I'm telling you, Saul, Saul, even after killing Goliath, cannot Dawood. accept David. Even after David killing Goliath, Saul cannot give his army to David. Saul, David has to raise his army. You have to raise your army. You have to raise your army. You have to raise your army. You have to raise men and women around you in consecration. Hello? Hello? Get your people. Raise them. Walk with them. Show them your journey. There are lessons that many are waiting from you. Amen. Amen. The deliverance you will receive this week is not the end. It's just a trigger for the great things God wants to use you. I'm telling you the Lord will deliver you. The Lord will heal you. This week the Lord will heal everyone. I can boldly say it. I can boldly say it. Because I have heard. He will heal everyone. He will deliver everyone. Who will be in this place. Who will be in this consecration. But that is not the end. That's not the end. He wants you to go. And do the same. To the people that are in what you've been through. You discover many 
Banji. have been in what you are in. And they are waiting for someone. They are crying for a deliverer. One who will help them. One who will understand them. One who will not judge them. One who will accept them. One who will be patient with them. One who will wipe out their tears. One who will understand their wounds. You know, let me teach you this. Let me say this. To others, I don't know. But every time I'm leading someone in deliverance, especially those who are wounded and tra in traumas, that moment the Lord brings my traumas to me back. The experience of my pains. He brings them back that day. That he may keep me in intercession. For the one I'm ministering to. Are you getting me? Do you get what I'm talking about? I don't know to others. But me and my wife, we go through the same that. He takes me in my experience, in my pain, to, to, for me to identify with the one in pain. That keeps me in a place of intercession. That keeps me in a place of intercession. Are you getting me? And keeps me in more consecration. I can easily understand the pain of someone who was sexually molested as a child. Because some people say, when God hears you, you forget. You've not been there. You've not been there. You remember them, but they are not, they are not now your, your bondage. You, you can't forget. You can't forget. I can't forget the men who molested me five years. I'm not in bondage. But I can't forget. Every day, everything, every act, I remember it. Every day I remember it. Even the vendor places, I remember them. But that helps me to remain a place of intercession. That helps me to embrace someone. Are you getting what I'm about? That helps me to seek God. And through those pains, I commit myself to God more. And that devotion is the place of the anointing. You my missed father, it. My father, my father. You've missed it. I wish you got it. That place of devotion is the source of the anointing. Your anointing is according to your devotion. Do you know that God is anointing you according to you what you've devoted yourself to? And most times, it's the identification that brings into devotion. Have you ever had a, a friend, a relative with a chronic sickness? And you have to help them every day? And you've devoted yourself to take care of them? Have you ever had that? 
And you don't expect anything from them. You don't expect a reward. But you are putting in your money, your time. And you don't sleep. You have devoted yourself to take care of this person. Not, I'm telling you, that devotion, that's how God anoints you. Amen. Amen. Because of your devotion and your commitment, why are you committed? Because you know. You know. You know what it means to be blind for a year. You know what it means to be in a hospital for a year. You know what it means to be paralyzed. You know what it means to be rejected. To be abandoned. To be cast. You know what it means that your own parents curse you. You know what it means. Your own pastor curses you. You know what it means. That you may not judge but identify with the people that are going through the same thing you've gone through. And I believe that's the foundation of intercession. So the 1,000 days that begin today, do I have people here that are saying, I want to walk that journey? You say, uh, Pastor James, uh, I want us to walk the journey. I'm not a superstar. But I want to walk as a brother in the journey of consecration. Seeking God together. Learning together. Waiting upon the Lord together. Sharpening each other. Amen. Amen. You came here to meet a brother you met already. I'm telling you, some of you have met you for the first time here. But when I looked at, when, when I, we, I talked to you, as if I know you, and when you introduce them, oh, okay, 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 okay. I know you. Maybe we've known each other online. Well, most of you, you've not known me. The last two months, not two months, or three. Three or three. Three or two. This is October. Four. But when you talk about when you talk to people about me, you know everything about James. <laughs> like you tell them this James, and like and when you ask since when you said October. And say November. Others say last week. Last, last week. But, but they say last week. week but, you know, some of you, I'm like, how did you know? <laughs> you know my wife. Oh, you know my children. <laughs> You know where you know my parents. <laughs> and I'm saying, how did you know me all this? <laughs> eh? Because you are a man of the spirit. Uh, we're going to have a, a moment in the next one hour of tarrying in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Of ministering to the Lord. 
in the next one hour. We are going to go through this. Read the Bible. I've, I've, I've been uh, encouraging you, talking to you. Encouraging one another in the Lord. We read the word. We've done the encouraging one another. That's part of raising the altar. Now we we'll go to the next part of the Ori's altar. Is ministering to the Lord. Coming before the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We love the Lord Jesus Christ. So we want to go before the Lord. And wait. Someone say and wait. Say wait. Wait upon the Lord. Come Lord Jesus. Maybe we can stand on our feet. Kneel down. Lay before the Lord. Call on his name. Ask him. Inquire of him. Whatever the Lord leads you to do this morning. Let the spirit of the Lord. Move. Come Lord Jesus. You are holy Jesus. Holy You are holy Jesus. You are awesome in this place. Mighty God. You are awesome in this place. Abba Father, you are worthy of my praise, and to you hearts we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty. You awesome, Lord. Thank you. 
Oh 
grossome in this place Abba Father Abba Father Your world Over praise and to you we lift a voice We lift our hands and give you glory To the fatherless, you're the mother to the motherless. We bow and give you praise, for oh, praise unto you. As we raise, you are awesome in this place. Father, 
you are awesome in this place. You are awesome in this place. We cry out your name. We cry out your name. The name above all names. The name above every other name. That's the name we came to long for. You are awesome, mighty God. You are awesome in this place. Oh, mighty God, you are awesome in this place. Mighty God. Abba Father, you are worthy of a praise. And to you I lift my You are awesome. Mighty God. I'm coming back to the heart of Worship, and it's all about you, and it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made, and it's all about. all about you Jesus I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you Jesus I'm so
to voice Longing just to Longing just to Bring something Something that's all That will bless your life Oh Just make it personal, come on. It's such much deeper within Through the way things are here You're looking into my heart I put on my time when the music fades When the music fades And all
Somebody has sent before the throne of God. We worship. It's all about you.
whenever you want what moments you choose whatever you plan oh my lord please let your will be done in me whatever you What moments you choose, whatever you plan, oh my Lord, let your will be done in me, so be
come to a place where our hearts can't say yes. Let our days be numbered by your will. Let our minds be Father Lord, numbered by your will. We come to a place, Lord, by your grace. Cause us to come into a place, Lord, where our souls can render to you, where our bodies can align to your will, where our mentalities and it can align to your will. Only you, Christ. That is why, Father Lord, we are crying out in a song we don't know how to make and better ask of it, but we are saying yes. Makata, but not by our will, Lord. We can't turn our own. I say yes. I say yes. I choose to say yes today. I say yes to your will. I say yes to your call. I say yes, Lord. I am tired of running. I am tired of hiding. I've been hiding. I've been running. I've been denying Right now I'm saying yes I am saying yes Lord Lord I say yes To follow your will I say yes I am saying yes to the call Lord from now on I am going to say yes I am saying yes Lord I am not going back to the same life. I'm not going back to disobedience. I'm not going back to mediocre life. Lord, I'm saying yes to your way. I will serve you. I will serve you, Lord. I will do what you ask me to do, Lord. I'll go back and do it again. I am not going to give up. I say yes, Lord. I say yes, Lord. I am not old. I am not young. I am not weak. I can do it. I am going to do it, Lord. It is never too, too late, Lord. So I say yes, Lord. On this first day of this journey, I am saying yes, Lord. I am not just checking it out. I am not going to just try it out. I am going to do it. I am saying yes. I will wait on you. I will serve you. I will. I am saying 
yes to your will Lord. your will is my will your way is my way I say yes Lord I say yes Lord it doesn't matter the circumstances it doesn't matter the resources around it doesn't matter what people say Lord, this time I am not turning back. I am saying yes. I am saying yes. I am saying yes. Oh. My Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That you have given me another opportunity to say yes. You have waited all these years for me to say yes. And Lord, today, this time, I say yes. And I thank you for waiting on me, for not giving up on me. I'm sorry for keeping you waiting all this long. No more waiting on me, Lord. I say yes. I say yes. I say yes. I repent, Lord. For giving all the extras I've been giving. No more excuses, Lord. This time I say yes. And this yes is permanent. This yes, this time is permanent. I'm not turning back. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, yes. Oh, Ramanda Kashikata. Riboko Shekete. Rama Mamandeke Shikata Kara. Rama Mamandeke Shakata Kara. I say yes. Lampanti ye Mokama. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, go ahead and give the glory and give thanks and give praise. Thank you, Lord. You have been such a good God, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, you can do better than that. You can do better than that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, Ramanda Kashikata. Thank you, my Father. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God's people, for being in God's presence. What a beautiful day that the Lord has given us. And we are continuing in raising the altar. In raising the altar. Hallelujah. 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 Allow me now. to give you a break of at least an hour from now. Hallelujah. Especially those who were here by five. How many of you were here by five? Yeah. Some people thought five is in the night. Five is in the morning time. It is not night time. Some of you thought, oh, there's a service at night. No, it wasn't night. It was just morning. Five, Five is morning. morning. Hallelujah. Hey, people are already sweating by five. But even those of you who came after five, we thank the Lord. But tomorrow let's all be here by five. Five is not arrival time. Five is starting time. Now some of you woke up at five. Hey, we are going to church at five when you're just waking up. No, five was the time for us to start the altar. Meaning you have to be here by latest 4.50. So five finds when you're already seated and you are already. Hallelujah. But we thank God that. So tomorrow by five, all of you have already to be seated. Hallelujah. Unless we want us to close you out. No, you're not going to close. But by five, eh? Be here. Let's take a break one hour. And 10 minutes past 10, we'll be back here for the second, for the second session. Hallelujah. God bless you. See you at 10.